I'm attempting my first Pokemon Nuzlocke in a game I never played. And if you think that sounds stupid, yeah, it probably is. But to make it even worse, with every Pokemon that dies, I have to fight Sans. I stream this run over on twitch.tv slash darkbeyondlive, and I'm going to be streaming there a lot more often. So hey, check it out after this video. <clears throat> Anyways, if you've played Emerald before, unlike me, you know that the game starts with us riding into the back of a truck before letting ourselves into a stranger's room and then taking our starter from this bag I found. I chose Mudkip and spam tackle against this wild Zigzagoon to save the professor. As thanks, he lets me keep the Mudfish Pokemon, and Brendan immediately challenges me to a battle with the Grass Starter. Normally, this would be a terrible matchup, but Trico doesn't know any grass moves at level 5, so I had a pretty easy time pressing tackle 4 times. Now that we have the Pokedex and some Pokeballs, I head back to Route 101 to catch a Wurmple. Generally, people will nickname the Pokemon in Nuzlocke so it hurts even more when they inevitably die, but I forgot to name both Mudkip and Wurmple, so I decided to keep their default names. On Route 103, I caught a Poochiena, and then headed left to Route 102 to catch a Lotad before encountering Youngster Calvin who had his own Poochiena. Because I'm not doing a randomizer or anything, all of the early battles can be easily swept with Mudkip, and after helping Wally catch a Ralts, I ran into Scott who was looking for talented trainers. But because I looked like a complete rookie, he walked away. But I wanted to prove that I wasn't a rookie, so I followed him to Route 1 of 4 to catch a Talo. This wasn't just your ordinary bird, however. This was a beast in the making. Guts is a powerful ability that doubles your attack when inflicted with a status. So if I found a way to burn or poison this tiny little bird before an important battle, it would sweep through their whole team 10 times over. But for now, I used their candies I found sitting in my PC to level up my team to match Mudkip before entering Petalburg Woods. Here I caught a Shroomish and fought against my first team Muckle Ground who had a level 9 Poochiena. Tackle did a lot less damage than I was hoping, and once the Poochiena started using Howl, I was forced to switch out to keep Mudkip safe. It got me pretty low, but I was able to take it down after my own share of Howls. Upon leaving the forest, we come across our first double battle. Because Mudkip and Talo are just that strong, I took out the Cedo with a Tackle Pet combo, allowing Mudkip to learn Water Gun. The low tide was pretty easy to take care of after Afterwards, and now we're in Rustboro City, where I immediately challenged the first gym. But I might have been a little too hasty, because I forgot to rear candy my Pokemon before talking to Roxanne. Surely that one caused me to lose my entire team. She led with a Geodude who died to a Water Gun, then sent out another Geodude, who also died to a Water Gun. But her Ace Nose Pass proved how strong Rock types could be by absolutely tanking the hit. That left me feeling pretty nervous. I couldn't afford to lose Mudkip this early in the run, and after getting hit with Block, only one one of us was making it out alive. And did I mention that the Snow's Pass is holding in foreign berry? Combine that with Roxanne's spamming potions, and it was not looking good for my starter. If Nose Pass got even a single critical hit on me, Mudkip would have been lost. But luckily, I was able to take it out with one final water gun, earning me the stone badge. I took a quick break to level up my team and grabbed an Ankata on the path to Rust Earth Tunnel. Here I found a Wizmer who was actually close to defeating Mudkip. But after switching out and throwing way more balls than I should have, we battled an Aqua Grunt and saved Pika. The Wingle. Now we can sail to Duford Town where we can take on Brawly. I got lost in his gym for a while, but Taylor swept all the gym trainers with wing attack. When I finally found Brawly, I expected I could just mash the A button, but Machop lived the first hit and struck back with a powerful Karate Chop that deleted more than half of my HP. While Taylor's flying typing is really good for this gym, its normal typing allows the opposing fighting attacks to hit for neutral damage, resulting in way more damage than you would expect. When the meta type came out, I switched into Beautify who tanked the incoming focus punch. A few gusts later brought it down, and while his Makuhita used bulk up and healed with his citrus berry, it was no match for Beautify's quad resistance to fighting. With my second badge acquired, I obtained the old rod and went fishing for some new water types. The only two we can get around here are Tentacle and Magikarp, so I put them in the box for now and made my way through Granite Cave. I snatched my own Makuhita on the way to Steven, and after delivering the letter, I sailed over to Slateport. Team Lock was at it again, so me and Taylor drove them all over by spamming wing attack. The boss Archie shows his face after witnessing his grunts fall to a single Pokemon and warns us not to get in his way. But I have a strange feeling that he isn't the one I should be scared of. Upon leaving the museum, Scott greets us again and finally acknowledges us as a competent trainer. And it was all thanks to that tiny bird I caught back on Route 104. With how much Taylor has carried me, I caught another bird on Route 110 just in case she were to ever fall in battle. This route is infamous for the rival battle, and while most people would strategize, 
guys and build their team beforehand? What if I just jumped in with no plan whatsoever? Halo easily took out Bird and Slugma, but because of Yawn, she was practically useless for the rest of the battle. I swapped in Mighty Anna to take out Wingle, but then I had to deal with his newly evolved Grovile. I sent out Beautify to nullify the incoming Absorb, and I took him out two turns later with Gust. When arriving in Mauville, Wally attempted to prove to us that he is strong enough to face Watson. Emphasis on attempted, because I took out his only Pokemon before it could even damage me. Now it was my turn to combat the gym, and to show Wally just how weak he really is, I swept Watson's first three Pokemon with Mudshot. His Minectric, however, gave me a bit more trouble with its higher base stats. But at the end of the day, it's not very hard for the Ground-type Pokemon to beat the Electric-type Pokemon. After spending a little too long locating the Rock Smash guy, I captured a Numel on Route 112, a Torkoal in the Fiery Path, and a Spindle on Route 113. All of the trainers I encountered here got destroyed by either Marshtomp or Swellow, so the trek to Fall Arbor Town was quite effortless. I was almost ready to give up the encounter on Route 114, but right as I was about to leave, a Seviper hopped out of the grass. When going into this run, I expected it to be a lot harder. Like, I've used the same four Pokemon up until now, and I haven't really had a need for any others. Having other options is nice and all, but honestly, with just how strong Swallow and Marshtomp are, there's just no way I lose this run. In Meteor Falls, I got a Zubat, but like, do we really care about the most common K Pokemon when Swallow is right there? I overhear Team Magma talking about a Meteorite, but after getting caught, Archie from Team Aqua bails me out before chasing after them. I have no idea what's going on, so I follow them all the way to Mount Chibney. Maxi of Team Magma doesn't approve of a 10 year old beating up all of his grunts, so he takes me on himself before I had the chance to force feed my team rare candies. His lead Mighty Anna intimidates me, forcing me to hit him with Water Gun for as much damage as possible. I still wasn't dealing a lot however, and the multiple sand attacks weren't helping either. Marshtomp was actually getting dangerously low on health, but as long as I didn't miss my next attack, I missed. Oh wait. Oh my god! So I switched into Swellow to finish the job, but a single bite took away a third of my HP. Maxi's Zubat instantly fainted from a crit wing attack, and with Camerup's awful typing, it should be pretty easy to take out too. However, Marshtomp was on the brink of death, and all of my other Pokemon were severely underleveled. I sent out Mightyena to make use of its Intimidate ability, as the Camerup goes for Focus Energy. To save my Intimidate Pokemon, I swapped Mightyena out for Beautify, who is completely unaffected by Magnitude. But now the issue was that I had a bug type in against a fire type. My only way out of this battle was to make sacrifices, so I just used Gust before Beautify fell to an ember. I sent in Swellow to do some more damage, but I knew I couldn't keep it in for long. A critical wing attack nearly kills the camera, but another ember puts me in kill range too. Maxi heals with a super potion on his following turn, and another wing attack only brings him to half. Swellow was likely to not kill with this next attack, so I brought back Mighty Ender to hopefully get more damage in. Ember does more than half to me, so I had to make a decision. So it's either going for Ember or Magnitude. If I predict it goes for Magnitude and I send it with Swallow, then I'm perfectly fine. I'm just gonna pray that it's not going for Ember here. No! And it gets a crit. Losing Swallow was devastating, but I didn't have time to feel sad. My chances of winning this battle just got even lower, and if I didn't think of something, the run would end right here. Sir, sure, let's send out Ninkeda. Do I just- do I wipe the fucking camera out? Ninkeda immediately dies to a crit ember, so I sent out Shumash who surprisingly tanks it and sets up a leech seed. I was gonna have to sacrifice Shumash, but there was a chance I could bring this behemoth down. With the health that leech seed has drained, the strength from Mighty Anna finally Takes it out. I had one, but at what cost? Two of the four Pokemon that carried me this far were dead, including the bird that couldn't take advantage of its formidable ability. And if you've forgotten, I now had to fight Sans four times. But to keep the flow of this video, we're gonna be doing that at the end. I rushed towards the Lava Ridge Pokemon Center to give my fallen friends a proper farewell, but I got a little distracted by the thought of catching a new team member. After running around for a bit, I found a Machop that was caught by a single Great Ball. Now that we're at the next gym, I had to build an entirely new team. With the Wingle I was saving for if Swellow met her end, I planned on making a rain team using Pelipper's Drizzle, but the emotional trauma I just went through was really taking a toll on me, so I ended my stream and picked back up the next day. When raising all my Pokemon to the level cap, I realized that Marshump was one level too high to be used against the Fire Gym, but that's alright, because we have Pelipper's Drizzle to carry us, it doesn't have Drizzle.
Well, that's fine. With the sheer amount of water types we have for this gym anyway, it shouldn't be very hard. I swapped out Marshawn for Hariyama and charged into the gym. Where do I go? I didn't want to look at any guides for this challenge, so I just brute forced it fighting like every trainer in the area before finding the path to Flannery. She leaves with a Numel who faints at even the slightest sight of water, and Slugma comes out to replace it. It lives a bubble beam with what I want to say is exactly one health left, but then attacks with smog that didn't even scratch my tentacle. Flannery wastes one of her potions, and I took out the slugma without breaking a sweat, but then she sent out Camera, who nearly ended this run 20 minutes ago. I tried to take it out with a strong 4 times effective bubble beam, but it somehow lived and hit me with a tackle dealing 33% of my HP. Flannery wastes another potion before I eventually take it out with the only attack I've used this entire battle. Torkoal comes out last, and apparently this thing has so much defense that a stab super effective bubble beam only did a third. It retaliates with body slam, paralyzing, and almost knocking out Tentacool, so I swap in Haruyama to hopefully deal massive damage with his high attack stat. I start with Fake Out for some chip damage, but then made the mistake of using the negative priority Vital Throw instead of Knock Off. Torkoal uses Attract, and my turn was wasted. I switch to Machoke to remove the annoying status condition, and the Fire Turtle sets up the Sun. This was bad. A stab overheat boosted by the Sun would kill anything and everything I sent out, but this strong fire move has the drawback of lowering the user's special attack by two stages after. Afterwards. I sacrificed Machoke after not hurting with Karate Chop, and that's when I found out just how much of a blunder using Vital Throw over Knockoff was. Orko's held item is a white herb that removes the downside to over a single time. Because Pelipper is useless without a drizzle, I sent it out next to use one attack, but another body slam paralyzes me, and I was in overheat range. To try and save as much Pokemon as possible, I swap back in Hariyama, but Sun Boosted Overheat was too much for him to handle. But now that I have a safe switch, I sent out my Diana to finally take the bloodthirsty Torkoal down with strength. Now that we have four badges to our name, we can return to Petalburg to challenge our dad. And because the level cap's two levels higher, I can take Marshawn out of the box before thinking of a plan for Norman slacking. My Pelipper knew Protect, so I was covered there. But before fighting Norman, we have to choose between the Strength Room or the One-Hit KO Room. I couldn't risk any Fissure Deaths, so I entered the Strength Room. The trainer here only has a Zangoose, and Gyarados' Dragon Raid should kill it in two. Yet somehow, it it lived despite already being in the yellow, and brought Gyarados to half. I know I outspeed, so I went for a bite, but this trainer had a hyper potion, and bite was pathetic since it's a special move in this gym. I had to switch to save Gyarados, so I brought out Torkoal, letting the Zangus use Swords Dance. I couldn't let it set up on me, so I went for a fire spin that missed, allowing Zangus to raise his attack even more. I trapped it in fire spin on my next turn, and swapped in Viper to save Torkoal for later. It got killed immediately, so I replaced it with Pelipper to use Protect in combination with Fire Spin. But then I realized that the Zangus wasn't taking any damage. Thinking that it was because Torkoal left the battle, I sent it back in as it almost died to another Slash. At this point, I had no idea what to do. All of my Pokemon would get swept by Slash, and I had no way of dealing enough damage in time. I ultimately decided to sack Torkoal so I could make use of Gyarados and Mightyena's Intimidate. It would result in Mightyena fainting, but my only way out of this battle was to lower Zangus' attack. I used another Dragon Rage with Gyarados before it unfortunately met the same fate as this Intimidate sister. But now that Zangus' attack was lowered by 4 stages, I sent out Pelipper who I thought would outspeed, but Zangus hit first with a critical hit that brought me down to my final Pokemon. I was at my lowest point. My strategy for slacking was just killed, and the Pokemon I still had in my box weren't gonna be much help. As a last resort, I sent out Marchomp and risked it all on a Mudshot. <gasps> Please hit. Oh my god! The 9 HP clutch! After recovering from almost losing the run for a second time, I rushed back to the Pokemon Center to add all of the Pokemon from my box to my party. Except Spinda. It can remain here for all eternity. Funnily enough, Norman led it with his own Spinda, who hit me with a critical facade right off the bat. Norman attempted to heal, but I kept up the pressure by spamming the same move over and over again until the Spinda finally went down. Marshomp was left with no health, so I swapped it for Golbet who got hit by another critical hit. Assuming I wouldn't get again, I used Confusory on the Vigoroth as Golbat hung on with 1 HP. I switched in Tentacle to slowly take it out with Bubble Beams, and Norman responded with a Lanoon that knows Belly Drum. I thought I could kill with my next attack, but the Lanoon restored all of its health with a Hyper Potion. Knowing that I still had Slacking to deal with, I couldn't keep switching out, so I used one final Bubble Beam before Tentacle bit the dust. I fought back with Lombre's Fake Out, but it was far too weak to survive a full power facade, and Loudry didn't fare any better. My only option was to outspeed with Golbat 
that, who thankfully got a provincial bite and took out the inferior third on the following turn. And when the menace slacking hit the field, I used another confuser to hopefully buy me some time to figure out how on earth I'm gonna survive this. It luckily hit itself, and I was able to deal some damage with bite before Golbat ultimately had to die. Numo came in to deal a bit more damage with magnitude, but the slacking outsped and was able to break through confusion, knocking it out. It was once again down to Marchomp, who had to clutch this whole run with only 14 HP. But once I brought slacking it down to half with Mudshot, it was revealed that it was holding a citrus berry the whole time. It was over. Even a critical hit couldn't save the mudfish from falling down. For my first run ever of this game, I think I did pretty well. Yeah, I wasn't perfect, and I probably could have saved so many innocent Pokemon if I did some things differently, but sometimes you're just destined to lose. And with 17 fainted Pokemon in the box, I had to fight Sans 17 times. But let's be real here, do you really want to watch the same easy fight over and over again? No. I had to make it as brutal as possible to punish myself for letting both Swallow and Marsh jump down. So me and my chat agreed that because we were on the 5th gym, I had to beat Sans with a grand total of 5 HP without any healing whatsoever. Well, I'm already dead. Alright Sans, round 2. Alright, that's the first attack done. Just got the rest of the fight to go. I'm gonna focus up so hard. I may as well have some HP to like 1 or something. Just watch the snow hit Sans. I believe. Until I don't believe. This might be the attack where I die. Oh no. Well, I was right. That is the attack where I die. I'm already at one health. And the first phase is harder than the second phase anyway. It's just the last attack that I'll probably die on several times. I'm gonna be here for the rest of the day, aren't I? Okay. Who believes? I don't believe. But what if? No! <laughs> God damn it. So we just gotta do the exact same thing as last time but better. It's really good that I still have the 5 HP buffer though, so I can make a single mistake and be fine. What great timing. How long were you to be here for until I actually do this? Oh my god, the 1 HP clutch. Can I actually do it this time? Moment of truth. All right, here we go. Yes! Oh my god! We did it! And that was that. No matter how hard I make the Sans fight, I will always prevail. Don't forget to follow me over on twitch.tv slash darkmanlive, where I'll be streaming all of my other Pokemon runs, where I hopefully don't get swept by a truant monkey.